What is going on, YouTube people? Saturday night, little live stream. I am basking in a post Cleveland Cavaliers victory early this afternoon. Got LeBron on the iPad in front of me so I could keep tabs on Lakers Nuggets. Fun Knicks Sixers game uh, that I just watched right before this. Little scary moment there with Embiid. I thought he was just going to be toast for the entire series, but. It was a little scary. And then Suns, Timberwolves, I'm just kind of whatever on. I think Timberwolves end up winning that series. I bet them to win that series. Pick them in tomorrow's video to win that series. But, um, but a Phoenix team just feels, something feels just off about that squad. Uh, I just can't really put my finger on it. But fun day of NBA playoffs. We'll see how this last game finishes up this evening. What is going on, chat? No real specific topic to touch on. I don't really have an agenda for this. Uh, I have not had a live stream that was not off-centered. The last time that I went live that was not off-centered was when Collectors Universe acquired SGC. At least that's the last thumbnail I had for a live stream. So it's been a hot minute for a non-off-centered live stream. We'll see if I could keep up with chat better than my old pal Dusty Buns. Uh, who has a tendency of following behind Sunday lunchtime for global out there in the, uh, in the land of the Aussies. Uh, what are some recent air quote plays I have been making lately? Global asks, uh, nothing super crazy. Honestly, I actually just had a package come in the mail today. I haven't even opened it yet of a, Bowman prospect uh, that I am chasing a little bit. First first card that I got uh, of that particular player. He's an Indians prospect. Uh, so I snagged one of those to stash away. And then, you know, the most recent pickups I had, they're still sitting on the desk here, are that uh, Stroud Silver and the Jamar Chase Orange. And then last night on ComC on auction, I bought a... Um, Juan Soto PSA nine hands on hips, uh, short print. So I'll probably have that shipped home here in a, in a couple days. I got some other stuff that I got my eyes on over there. Excuse me, that I want to wait to send home. So <coughs> sorry for some, I haven't had a cough for weeks, and then for some reason, whatever reason today, it decided to kick back in again. I did, I have not purchased my ticket yet, but a hotel room has been booked for Fanatics Fest, or whatever they're calling this thing, in New York City uh, in August. So I will be attending, I don't have a ticket bot, but I'm about as sure as sure can get because we just booked a non-refundable hotel room for that weekend that I will be in the NYC for Fanatics Fest. So it is going to be a busy summer from a show standpoint. Um, Ship Shawana on Memorial Day. I do. I still do not know if I will make that show or not. The Monday ones are always tough for me. Heroes Con in June down in Charlotte. The National in my own backyard come July. We'll have Fanatics Fest in New York City in August. Take a couple months off unless something pops up, and then I'll be back in New York City again in October for New York Comic Con. Uh, I haven't booked that yet, but we are, uh, the wife and I are most likely going to be attending New York Comic Con. Uh, we've been discussing it since last year when we went. So, potentially a uh, busy summer of some long weekends bouncing around the country uh, to look at expensive pieces of paper and expensive pieces of cardboard of men, cartoon characters, and whatever else uh, encapsulated in plastic with a little number in the top corner to designate how much money we will overpay for it. Uh, so fun times, fun times. I don't know what to, I really don't know what to, uh, part of the Fanatics Fest thing is it's just more of a curiosity. I just kind of want to be at the first one and see what it's all about, see what the deal is. Maybe FOMO got me a little bit, but. We'll see. We shall see. Uh, good evening, Delgado. 
Reveal Drifts asks, what is your views about the PSA soaking issue long-term outcome? Boy, boy, oh boy. Uh, I did, a, I mean, I did a full 10 or 15 minute video on this uh, the other day. I talk about this in tomorrow's weekly sports card market update for a little bit. Uh, actually, quite a bit of time tomorrow on tomorrow's video. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll touch on it. I'm sure it's going to come up multiple times tonight um it's you know it, it sucks that they can't detect this stuff is really what it ultimately comes down to i don't like the idea of selective enforcement like they did on this i get decertifying the one that was on video i don't know that i like them blindly assuming that the other cards in the submission were soaked and listen, they probably were, but the fact is, is that you, you don't have any way to prove that one. That just feels like a slippery soap slope to me. The other hang up that I have is if you're going to do this, why did the Wemby one of one slide? I felt like the Wemby one of one was the moment in time where this whole thing pivoted one direction or the other. Personally, I would love to see the grading companies come out sports card grading companies come out this is kind of you're going to get this same shtick tomorrow on the weekly i thought this whole thing would be an opportunity for the grading companies to come out and kind of walk down the path comic books went and say you know we understand this is happening we're going to take ownership of this uh you know we'll test these chemicals or whatever the spray the juice the cream the clear figure out which ones are okay, which ones aren't, and kind of lay down some guidelines on what card cleaning means a lot of different things. You say the word card cleaning, and there is no clear-cut definition of that. If I pick up, uh, you know, this what do I got randomly, this random Bowman Refractor Mojo, and I fingerprint it all up, and I take a microfiber cloth, and I wipe those off just like this, I clean that card. Now, PSA came out in their statement and they said, you know, you could use you can use a huff and puff method, basically. You could use a little water, which to me, tap water scares me more than most things in this country. And you could use that. I just wanted them to take this opportunity to go down the path of comics and say, you know what, we are going to allow certain things to happen. We're not going to allow certain things to happen. I don't know where those lines would have gotten drawn. You know, these things are acceptable to use on surface. Even now, with you know the statement that they made in the collect article about blowing on it and water and stuff, that's still buried in an article on a website. I would like to see PSA come out and bullet point this stuff on your website. Let us know exactly what can and can't be used. Uh, we're living in this gray area still, even with them cracking down. But do I actively clean cards now with product? No, because the grading companies say you're not supposed to. But I would have liked to have seen them take this as an area of opportunity to move down more the path of comic books. And maybe one of the grading companies still will. It feels like PSA has decided not to. And that's disappointing, just because I would have liked to have seen that. But you know, we don't always get our way, so... I'll continue to play by the rules that they set out before us. The, the, um, I don't know where I wanted to go with that thought now. The, the ultimate problem comes down to because they can't detect it, it leads to this path of their cherry picking here and there where they want to go with it. Oh, well, we saw that card on camera, so we're getting rid of that one. Oh, the Wemby 101, they said Kurt's card care. We can't detect anything. We didn't see it on video, so I guess we got to let that one slide. That's what I don't like about all this. I think ultimately, if they truly want to crack down on this stuff, and if that's what they want to do, that's their prerogative. Once again, we'll, we'll play by the rules that they set down before us. They have got to figure out a way to detect. I don't know if that's possible or not without damaging the card. 
without adding too much expense or too much time to the entire process. But they have got to figure that out if they truly want to get their hands around this. And I get, you know, Dustin talked about it in his video today. Dan hinted at it in his video today. I get why PSA has concerns because, specifically to them, they have the money back guarantee. So if the card in question has issues later on in life, they're on the hook for it. I understand that. Their insurance company's on the hook for it. They're not, but, you know. I just was hoping this was going to go more the path of comic books and let this stuff fly. The question that's been getting floated around lately is on social. Would you, if, 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 if this, what do I got laying here? The random Luca PSA 10 rookie. If you had two of these and this one was juiced and it was labeled that it was juiced and you had this one that was a plain Jane that was pure. Would you pay the same for both cards with a, with a sports card? For me, the answer is no, because the rules aren't in place to allow stuff like that. So we don't know what happened to the one that was juiced. But am I a hypocrite for saying that? Because I have a wall of comic books behind me that I know, especially like that one over there in the corner, the Sentinel one. The book's from the 60s. I guarantee that book was clean and pressed with whatever methods they used, wet, pla wet cleaning, dry cleaning, I don't know. It's not denoted, but it got a CGC blue label. And I can, I actually, I know that book was pressed. You could tell by looking at it. Some comic books, you could tell by looking at it, whether it was pressed or not. Sometimes you can't tell. I 100% know that book was pressed. I can reasonably assume that book was cleaned as well. I spent, I don't remember what it was, 1200 Now nah, it was less than that. It was like seven or $800 on that first appearance of the Sentinels. If you presented the same question to me with a comic book and they're both CGC blue labeled, I wouldn't care. I go with whatever one looks better. I, the whole thing's just till they can figure stuff out. The whole thing is just so messy. And now I pulled a Dustin and I am way behind on chat. Very quickly. So I got on my soapbox there. Let me quickly kind of filter through these really quick. Uh, final verdict on the Bobby Witt. That will be a separate video on Monday, most likely. It was going to be a Saturday or a Friday video, but then the card cleaning stuff came. Blazing with the celebrities? No, I don't think so. Uh, card shows are wild right now. We'll talk about that in a minute. Fanatics should caught me. I doubt that's going to happen. Oh, you're coming to NYC on Saturday. Interesting, Steven. Interesting. Trey Lance pump is coming. I can see that. That doesn't shock me. Jerry Jack or Jerry Jones is pumping them. Interesting. Uh, agreed. The Wemby should be deactivated if they're really serious, but they need to give that upcharge feedback. <laughs> Have, I haven't had any grading returns come from the East Coast, so I can't speak personally on that. I have heard and seen posts on social of people complaining about grades coming from the East Coast, but I have no personal experience with that. Every one of my orders has come from the West Coast. Uh, I'm sure they're going to have all kind of exclusive nonsense. East Coast graders lower than West Coast. We got East Coast, West Coast thing going on. Uh, I don't disagree with that comment, Turtles. I mean, the question is, is that we don't really know. I, I mean, what's worse? I, and I honestly don't know. I'm not a chemist. I have no idea. What's worse for a card? Putting a little tap water on it to clean it or putting it in distilled water? I, I, I truly don't know the answer to that question. I know people have been cleaning and pressing comics for 10 or 15 years, if not longer, and those have held up just fine. I don't know, but that's part of the, that goes back to what I was talking about earlier. I would like one of these grading companies to take a serious run at this stuff and look at it and do analysis and, and look to see if, you know, this stuff does have a negative effect or not. Because that's the big question. We're assuming that it does. We don't know. Maybe the card disintegrates in 10 years. I have no idea. Maybe it stays perfectly fine and there's no harm done to it. We have no idea. 
And I get that's part of PSA's concern. But like Dan the Cardman said, there's, there's, there's fault on both sides of the fence here. Yeah, I mean, do you draw the line at having video evidence? I mean, they admitted to Kurt's product was involved in that card somewhere, most likely. But that's the problem. It gets back to the detection angle of it. They have to figure out if they really want to lock this stuff down, they have to figure out a way to detect it. Or we're just going to constantly keep having this conversation. If they can't actually, and whether it's PSA or any grading company, if they can't actually figure out a way to detect it, here's how this is going to go. This is going to be the talking point, this this uh, Jackie, for the next week or so, maybe less, till the next thing comes up. And everyone will be like, oh, you know, card cleaning this, card cleaning that, it's good, it's bad, it's indifferent, I'm this way, I'm that way, I'm on this side, you're on that side, we all hate each other, we're arguing about things. And two weeks from now, Something will happen somewhere else or a week from now, probably days from now. People will get all riled up about that. That'll be the next news cycle. And then there'll be something after that. There'll be something after that. Next thing you know, it's the national. Everyone's all fired up about that. And then sometime in September or October, some Caleb Williams Prism 101 will get cleaned up. Someone will catch it. And then we're all right back to where we started again. Because it's just a vicious cycle over and over and over and over and over again until they could figure this stuff out. And that's the way it's going to keep being. Like uh, someone said, they're going to keep making an example out of someone every so often to be like, oh, look, see, guys, see hobby purists. We did it. We did it. We, we, we got the bad, evil cleaners. We got them. They're over there. We got them. They're gone. Bye. Don't worry about the other 50,000 cards that are getting submitted with juice on them. But we got that one. That's the problem, though, Turtles, when you live in the gray area like this with no firm rules or regulations. First time sending, cheat high. Like, if you think it's too cheap to go on the platform, don't send it. Error on the side of, like, $5 and up. I'm not, I don't think Kurt actually had the Wemby in his hand. I think Kurt's products were used on the card. I don't believe so, but I don't know for sure. Anyone in chat, if you've had a recent, okay, right below answers. If anyone has recent uh, SGC turnaround times, feel free to fire away. Yeah, it feels like the toothpaste is way out of the tube on this one. That could be the case, though, Filmington, for sure. But on the flip side of it, on Kurt's submission, they deactivated the other whatever it is. There's 12 cards in that submission. They only have video evidence of one. So you could say the same thing about that because they graded all 12 of those. And then they only technically had video evidence of just the Jackie, but they decertified them all. I mean, that's their prerogative, but that's the problem that we're in right now. Yeah, I saw lots of stuff about this. Um, I've already recorded one video about this topic, and I have a part two video kind of about this topic that'll be up midweek, um, kind of ahead of content for this week for a rare time. The other thing that I did, and I don't want to get too far down this rabbit hole, last weekend and this weekend, I spent, pray for me, pray for me, friends. I spent multiple hours on whatnot. I only had to take a couple showers. But talk about the wild freaking West. You want to know why people are paying 100% comps for cards at shows? Go hang out on whatnot right now. It's insane over there. Uh, that's a tricky one, Rob. I don't know where I would fall on that. 
Uh, I don't necessarily disagree with this either, KP. Yeah, correct, Fussel. Sorry, I'm just trying to play catch up on chat a little bit here. You're going in the realms of paper composition that I do not understand. Something sports card says SGC is taking forever. I'm almost caught up. Yeah, I, the whole SGC situation, I mean, collectors purchased them. How long ago was that now? Almost two months. And basically, nothing has really happened with them since. I'll be curious to see what their submission times look like, their submission numbers look like on the gem rate data once they kind of clear up this backlog. Kurt's products were only used in cleaning the curtain behind Wemby's. Behind Wemby, that's where I draw the line. So the curtain can be cleaned. Oh, boy. I uh, know. No new updates on SGC. People, people complaining about tap water. Uh, Mr. Brad Beeman in the house. Show promoter of the Ship Shawana show. Notice the last two weeks shows are just slightly down, but very, very strong for this time of year. And money is ridiculously good, i.e. repackers. The repackers are insane right now. Insane right now. There is literally photos all over social today. I posted one on Twitter. You go to my uh, Instagram, put it on Instagram, of the buying stations. You, ever, you go to a card show and they got the big buying stations. It's like buying at 80 to 85% or whatever it is. At Minnesota, they had a piece of paper hung over 85 or 90%. So it was 80% to, and they had a piece of paper hanging over it, 100% comps. They're paying full comp. That tells you how much money they are making on the repacks or flipping it on whatnot auctions most of the nice slabs are going to repacks and they're not just buying anything you can't just walk up with your random ten dollar slab and expect to get 100 percent comps for it but it is absolutely wild right now out there and once again like i mentioned a few minutes ago if you go poke around on whatnot tiktok fanatics live you will very quickly see why the amount of inventory that is getting moved on that platform is insane. I was in one room. They were selling repacks. This is the focus of the video that I did. So spoilers for later this week. One repack in one room that sold out in the course of a couple hours, as fast as they were listing them, they were selling. Just to build that repack, they needed $300,000 in inventory. For one room, for one repack on whatnot, for one night. And it sold out like that. 300K in inventory to make up 100 boxes. It is wild stuff over there. And I'm ignorant to it, 100%. I never spend any time on whatnot. I don't go over there. It's not a platform that I ever look at or download. Or I, I never go in there. And about a week and a half ago, it was basically after Chantilly. I was like, I, where is this stuff going? I have to figure this out. And it's like I said, it's just it's not it's not how I think to even potentially buy a card. And most of it is repacks. It's it, Most people aren't selling. There are some people that are doing 99 cent auctions on stuff. That's where you see a lot of like the five, 10, 15 dollar stuff move to. But anything that's a slab that's decent is going straight in a repack. It is wild stuff over there. Yeah, well put, Perk.
Uh, I don't think I'll do a draft stream. I'm not a draft guy. I just, I just don't know it well enough. Yeah, I don't know. You know, do they? How far down that path do they want to go? How much does it cost? How much time does it add? Is there any risk to the card getting damaged for whatever test they have to do? Uh, Thomas kind of lays out the SGC timeline there for anyone curious. Uh, that sounds like a very PSA thing to do. They do that a lot. But it, it just kind of depends on, I don't know how they, I'd be curious to see where the, you know, wh what causes an order to go which way versus another. I don't know if it's just workloaded in an individual site or what. You would think, uh, maybe they'll get to this point eventually. Like when I ship an order in from Ohio, you would think that they would open that up to go to, New Jersey. Like they would just say East Coast go to Jersey, but I I don't think Jersey's like still a fully operational uh machine at this point. I don't know that they're fully staffed. I think they send a lot of TCG to Jersey too. Cuz I think TCG is easier to train people on. Yeah, they changed PSA slabs about 6 months ago, I think, maybe even a little longer. I mean, we, we've talked about this before, Bush League. Why do people buy repacks? Because the repack is a better value than a hobby box of Prism. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. The repack is a better... People can hand-assemble a repack checklist, build in their margins, and sell it, and it is a better experience if they're legit about it. And I, like, I, like I, you know, some repackers are probably super shady and doing super bad things. I'm sure there are some that are doing things on the up and up and they're doing everything correctly. The ones that I watched that looked like they were doing things correctly. But that's what it comes down to. People want to gamble. They want to gamble. And it's an unregulated casino. It's gambling. It scratches all those itches. They can tell their wife, oh, I'm not going to the casino tonight. I'm going to buy sports cards on whatnot, which is just a different version of a different casino. And then the value proposition is just better. The stream that I watched, it was like 3K to buy into the repack. It was 100 boxes. The average was 27. The floor was 1,100. And the top end chaser was like 20-some thousand. So you had whatever that is, chance to get a $20,000 hit. You just feel better after opening a repack than you do a box of prism. That's really what it boils down to. Is, is that me in my basement can assemble a product to open better than Panini and Tops can. And that's what part two of the video will be. Is what Turtles just hit on right there. Part one of the video that's coming out later this week is me kind of talking about a little bit in more detail what we just discussed. Part two is, is this whole thing just a house of cards that's getting propped up by repack revenue? Uh, just eBay sold, alt, card ladder, market movers, 130 points, same thing as everybody else. They don't have to. People, people get addicted to gambling just as easy as they get addicted to drugs. They definitely make the money go around, that's for sure. Using Becca. Now they use tough stuff. Repackers use tough stuff. Yeah, I didn't spend a lot of time looking at singles auctions. Yep, you nailed it. Wisconsin. All the gambling addiction. Yep, it's non-sports cards, too. Crazy Kev says, wow, 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 wow. Ah, here we go. My, my buddy Jeff exchanged DMs often, met him at the National last year. He was at, He's <coughs> local to Minnesota. He was at the show. What does he have to say? Crowd slightly smaller than expected. Dealers unhappy. Attendance wasn't free. Interesting. Teenagers dominated trade night. No surprise there. I was never offered 100% comps on my baseball slabs because they want football, Jeff. 
Steve Splendor, fresh off a date with Caitlin Clark, decides to stop in. Yeah, I think mostly modern and TCG is going to Jersey. Basketball and football seem to dominate the teenage crowd. That's not surprising given the NBA playoffs are starting up and football is always, always hot. Whoa, not touching that one, Beavis. Something sports cards. I have a store people do repacks because when they buy a box and get nothing but $20 in returns after spending $300 versus getting $75 back after spending $150, the value is better and the cards are already graded. Bingo. Nailed it. Hundred percent agree with you, Steven. Repacks are completely changing the show model right now. Yeah, you could definitely take advantage of it for sure. Rumor has it it takes a diamond tip blade to open PSA slabs now. I haven't tried to crack one since their new slabs came out, but I have heard that they don't split as easy. But they're 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 kind of a pain in the butt. <coughs> or it's a way for kids under twenty one to gamble. I just don't know where the kids are getting the money. That's the problem. How, how many kids do you know have three grand to buy into a repack? Here's the problem, though, Stephen. The repackers are at trade nights now too. The repackers walk the floor at trade. When I was at ships, you know, Brad's in chat. When I was in ships, I had plenty of repackers walk past to try to buy me out, depending on what they were paying. They weren't paying as strong back then. It's December, and I hear they let you buy them back. Didn't sell Tyrese Halliburton Prism Silver PSA 10. He was looking like he was going to have a hell of a season, and that hamstring wrecked him. Yeah, uh, and I agree 100% with this, Brad. Uh, Brad says, if you PC or collect, repackers don't hurt you that much. It sucks for guys that like to dabble in flipping. Yes, 100%. Because they're looking at the same things we are. And as a casual, like I kind of talked about in the Chantilly stuff, as a casual flipper, they're just beating me to the punch. They're going to be faster, better. They have way more connections than I do. They're getting earlier show access. They have more buying power than I do. So like people said in the comments of that video, it's adapt or die. Figure something else out. Go rot a grade like Flipping Steve is. Um, go non-sports. You know, look to move into other avenues that they're not on, and you just got to find a selling base for that stuff but it does make it trickier or don't worry about any of it and just have some freaking fun. Buy cards that you like, rip a box of wax. If you want to rip a box of wax, if you want to buy a new repack, go buy into a repack. It's your money. Spend it however the hell you want. Yeah, they definitely like the hypey hype. I definitely saw that while I was on there for a couple of days. I think Fanatics will try to bring down laws on repackers in the future. I don't because if they're selling on Fanatics live, Fanatics doesn't give a crap. They get a 3% cut or whatever cut they get for every transaction. So they don't care. They're making their 10%. Yeah, 100%. 100% this. The sudden death clock on stuff, the quick turnaround time. You see a lot of five and ten dollar cards go for 15, 20, and 25 because people get caught up and you don't have time to think. You just get caught up in the emotions of it. That's what the whole app and the live selling stuff is designed around for stuff to sell for more than it should. It plays into our human emotions. It's gotta be pretty good, Turtles, given the amount of money that's getting thrown around. Uh, I don't disagree with this, Revere. Basketball and football, because it's what the kids want. It's what the younger generation wants. The teens to 20s to college to sub-30, they want football and basketball. It's mostly what they're chasing still. (laughs) 
<laughs> Something sports car says shop local. The freezer method. Interesting. Uh, it's mostly modern unless it's like some like a Jordan or something. You know what I mean? They might go after like a, you know, a, a Jerry Rice rookie or something like that. But they're going to be very, very picky. Uh, yes, Crazy Kev. A, a repack is basically a grab bag. Correct. Uh, I mean, it, it, you're not 100% wrong, Stephen. It's, I've talked to a lot of dealers, and it's tricky because, you know, if, if you bring your inventory, you set up and you want to sell, you're, you're, you are set up at the show to sell. Do you care who you sell to? So if I walk by as Mr. Repacker and I say, hey, uh, comp out your whole table, I'll give you 90%. And you've been set up for 15 minutes. Are you going to turn that down? I think most people would snap call and say, bye, here you go. Do you want the chair too or just the table or just the stuff? But the problem dealers are having is getting inventory on the back end. How do they replenish their table? Because maybe they got a show again in two weeks and now their whole table just got bought out, which is your goal. But now what do you do? I guess you got to take that money and go buy. But it's a vicious cycle because the repackers are paying 90 to 100% now in some cases. You know, basically 80 to 100%, depending on what you have. The average person walking the floor with a Zion case isn't going to sell to the dealer for 70 anymore or 75. So now the dealer has to pay stronger there, which squeezes their margins more and more. So then does it make it worthwhile for them to even set up? If they have to buy at 80 to 85 like the repacker, and they're doing the travel, the setup, and all that nonsense, and someone walking the show floor wants to pay 90 or 95, all of a sudden, that's razor-thin margins. Whereas the repacker, they could pay 90 to 100% because they're making 20 or 30% on the back end on the repack. They're, they're, they're building that stuff into the price of the repack. I, it, it, it's a weird situation. No, uh, we just talked about this cardboard money. No, the dealers can't pay 70 anymore because they can't get inventory at 70. Yeah, look, Thomas, if you're on the low end, you're 100% fine. You're 100% fine. Hockey. I had to buy a new one. <laughs> uh, Splenda. Uh, yeah, I covered that in last week's uh, weekly market update, Bush Leaguers. Maybe. I don't have kids, so I, I don't know. You could be right, Turtles. Maybe parents are just footing the bill on this one. Caitlin Clark coming to WNBA products soon. Yeah, baseball is tricky unless you got like Acuna or Wit right now. <coughs> Excuse me, gentlemen and ladies, if there's any ladies. Uh, I talked about this earlier, Elegant. Elliot, in the current state of things, no, because the grading companies don't allow it. And I flip-flopped on this in the past. I've, I've answered this other ways, and the more that I've thought about it, and th this is where it gets tricky. I'll repeat myself from earlier. If, and if it, we're under the current rules where they can't detect anything, but someone said, hey, I, you know, I, I cleaned this card or I did X, Y, or Z to this card. And you presented me with two options. I'm, I'm going to take the one that was untouched. I joked about this. My, my joke about this joke, let me air quote joke, was if you had two cards 
and they told you one was juiced and one wasn't juiced, which one would you buy? And I'd say, well, of course you're going to buy the unjuiced one because that means you could crack it and juice it and bump it three grades, right? Joking. My problem with this is, this whole scenario is, is that I'm a hypocrite because I'd buy a comic book that was clean and pressed, no problem. If I got a CGC blue label, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Because repacks aren't selling at shows. Repacks are selling online on whatnot. And local card show dealers, most of them, don't have large followings on, on live streaming platforms. The people walking around a show, in general, most of the people walking the show floor at your average local card show are not repack buyers. Some will be, because you're going to have some younger generation in there. But the bulk of your audience at a card show, at a local show specifically, is not repack buyers. So if you set up and just did repacks only, would you sell some stuff? Probably. But you're not going to turn over inventory as quick as you are going live on whatnot, if you have a following on whatnot. That's what it comes down to. It's the audience. You got to bring the inventory that your audience wants. There is some of this going on. So say I'll use that $3,000 repack. For, let's say you buy into a $1,000 repack. The floor is 500, the high end's 2,000, whatever it is. I And I, when I watched the whatnot stream, there was people doing this. The people selling the repack will go, this is fantastic. What a business model this is. What, we're so stupid, why didn't we think of this? The repacker will sell you the repack for 1,000 bucks. Okay, that's with their margins built in. So they're making money on that. Let's call it 20. Let's say they're making 20%. I don't know what they're making, but they're making margin on that $1,000. Let's say you hit a $900 car. You hit a CJ Stroud Silver out of a $1,000 repack. I don't know what it comps for today. Let's say 900 bucks. And you probably feel pretty good. You spent a thousand bucks. You got a $900 card. That's not the worst thing in the world. You could have read the box of prism and got $20 worth of dumb vet silvers. And you go to the repacker. You just broke this. You just gave them a thousand dollars. They handed you a $900 card and a repack. And they go, if you don't want that, we'll buy that back off you. Really? As, as me as the buyer. Really? Yeah. What's it come for? 900 bucks. I'll give you 850 for it right now, cash, done, or 850 credit to the next repack. Maybe even they'll give you full comp, 900, maybe 875. Yeah, done. Cool. Now, as the repacker, you just made whatever percentage you made on selling it. You just bought the card back for a discount to mark it up again. You didn't even have to ship it. You didn't have to pack it. You didn't have to do nothing. You just take it, put it in a pile, and mix it in the next repack for next week. What a great freaking business model they came up with. It is wild stuff out there. I agree, Stephen. Uh, it depends on what the card is. Just check comps is the best way to tell you that. Usually you have to tend that stuff. It gets a little tricky. Uh, that's... Uh, keep waiting on the Jonte J- Porter dip. It's going to keep going lower. What an idiot. Bedard's crap pat prices keep crashing. I didn't uh, I didn't pull his charts for tomorrow's video because I was a little behind on time. But his PSA 10 Young Guns keeps going down, down, down. Yeah. Yep. I mean, AP nails it. You pay a premium the Rip Tops product. You know you're not nine times out of ten. If I op- I have Bowman Jumbo Hobby Boxes coming in a couple of weeks that I pre-ordered, five hundred bucks a box. I know I will be lucky to get my value back out of that. So what's the difference? I probably have a better chance at hitting something better out of the repack, honestly. Yeah, I mean, listen, 
the kids are the biggest hustlers in the world. You go to these trade nights and stuff like that. The kids are the biggest hustlers in the world. The biggest reason why they have nothing but time. Kids basically have unlimited time. You have no real job. You have no real responsibilities outside of chores, homework, and a little bit of school. And you have the whole summer off to grind. And some of these kids are hustlers. And I mean that in like, I'm going to hustle you. And also, I'm going to work my ass off. I mean that both directions. Some of these kids are super, super smart. You have a kid walk up to you at a trade night. Don't be surprised if they run circles around you. I learned that a long, long time ago. It, I, I honestly, that's the million dollar question, Mage. I don't know. I don't know. One of my friends buys for repack said they would love to be on six nights a week, but can only do three to four because of inventory. We are in the junk slab era and there is an inventory shortage. Figure that one out. Yeah. hundred percent AP. It's a more minute Minnesota show of the 500 tables. I only saw one table with tag slabs. Oh, don't see. You said the three letter acronym. And now the bots are going to come. You summon the bots, Jeff. This is your fault. I have the Magneto helmet. It's right there. I have the Magneto helmet right there, ready to go if the tag bots come. Yeah, kids don't screw around when they're negotiating, man. They just throw it out there. The same benefits of buying wax, Splenda. People want to gamble. Boy, J-Rod's killing me. I bought that refractor, and he is killing me. Uh, I mean, card prices don't make sense most of the time. Luca's people just like Luca more. It just comes down to that. On-court performance has a very minor effect on... Uh, I shouldn't say minor, but on-court performance is overrated when it comes to what card prices are going to do. It's only a small factor. Dan the card man in the house. I think his PSA 10s are like 600 now. I could be wrong. I haven't looked for a hot minute. Now, now, kids. Trust your gut. Are your odds better buying repacks? Listen, I, I don't know for sure, but clearly the market has decided that the odds are better buying the repack because otherwise you pull up, pull up whatnot right now. I guarantee most of the rooms are selling repacks and not sealed wax. Now, I, I talk about this in the video that I recorded that will go up later this week. Um, part of that is that there's not good product out right now. There's nothing to chase. Like here we go. This is this is this is great television. Uh, Nebulas, backyard rips, repack room, 122 people. This is a Saturday night. Uh, there's a flawless case, 70 people. Look at the number of people in the number of rooms. $2,000 floor, legendary breaks, 114 people in there. Nitro edition, six to $10,000 ceiling repack, 140 people in there. Venom Plus, these things sound like drug names. I joked about this in the video. It sounds like when the kids used to make up the names for the drugs on the wire. King Cobra Hunt is here, 55 people in that room. Massive Gold Bombs, 50 people in that room. Uh, there's an actual mixer. There's, I don't know what's going on there. Brilliant series. Who doesn't want to buy from that guy? Look at that. That guy's got a crown on. He's got a Nebula Spectacular. There's 40 people in there. 
46 people chasing Bada Bang's Gold Edition. $20,000 chaser. Uh, there's uh, one single auction one there. There's 200 people in there. This just keeps going, folks. There's where all your inventory is going. Look at the number of people in all these rooms. This is live right now on what? This is just whatnot. I'm still scrolling. 20 people, 30 people. There's 90 people in there. 34 people there. 867 there. This is a Saturday night. Oh, Cards HQ, there's only 17 in there. Sorry, Jeff. I mean, it's wild. Listen, I'm sure there's a bunch of repacks that are out there that are absolutely terrible. But I'm sure there's some that are good, too, and some that are in between. I'm telling you, Dan, I don't care what they say. They got the algorithm, all, all a algorithms. You say the tag word, and they just come out of the woodwork. Or they just want to gamble. Uh, an Uber out of the motel in North Olmstead be an okay way to attend the national renter cars are pretty expensive these days. I'm thinking about just waiting a year for Chicago. I don't know what the Uber scene looks like in Cleveland because I've never needed one before. I think you'll be okay. I worry about uh, if you're going to Uber. I would recommend either getting there early and when you go to leave, don't try to leave when everyone else is leaving. Four hits and two steals today. Come on, my boy. Charisma is big. Day of the man. Is this live? Yes, this is live. Seal wax is a ripoff. It depends on the repack, but typically one slapped card. Uh, you're not wrong, Perk. I probably shouldn't have bought two jumbo boxes. Massive gold bomb sounds like a strip club. People younger than us. J Rod does start slow every season. Yeah. It, it, whatnot is modern day home shopping on absolute a billion steroids. Forget the comedy. Because they're all, you don't see the repacks. They're on here. The repacks are on here. It's because we're old. It's okay to admit it, David. It's because we're old. That's the scary part, Mr. Pitts. That's the scary part. I've been saying this for a year. If you ever get wind that repacks are getting shut down, sell everything you own that you don't remotely care about as fast as humanly possible. It is ultra modern because it is a house of cards. That's what we'll probably talk about in a video later this week. Here's the thing. I don't know that Fanatics cares because that was whatnot, but I'm sure if I pulled up Fanatics Live, it would look very similar. And Fanatics doesn't care because they make, I don't know what the percentage they take. Let's just say 10%. They're going to make 10% on every transaction. So what do they care if you're buying? Yeah. Do they make more if you buy a box of Tops cards? Yes. But they're still making 10% on the repack. That's all they care about. I'm sure there's plenty of older people that get hooked on it too, but I did. I did indeed. Uh, I'll, uh, let me see if I can pull that up. Please hold. Please hold.
So this was I don't know how well this will present. This was a post from today. This was a legitimate post in old school Facebook group. If you don't know what it is, it's a invite only Facebook group with a lot of old school people, high end cards. This was this this is what this person posted, and this person buys a ton in that room. I excluded their name because I didn't know if they wanted it out there or not. I'm offering a hundred and fifty thousand dollar base pay to anyone who is confident they can buy forty to 60k a week worth of cards at close to 80 percent using their their money he's gonna front you the money if you could spend 70 to 100k a week he'll pay you 250k a year and he's covering travel expenses if that doesn't if that doesn't tell you how much money is in the repack business i don't know what else to say I think that's where to, to circle. I don't want to say the T word, the T A G. It's like a dog. You can't actually say the word walk. You got to spell it. T A G has been grading all that Pokemon stuff for a couple months now with and none of it's hitting eBay. I, I would not be shocked if that's for a repack would not be shocked. If at some point soon we see some sort of T A G repack pop up. Uh, that's an interesting question. Actually, Sam's I don't follow the modern star wars stuff very closely because i'm mostly a stellar collector i don't follow i'm not a crypto guy so I, i'm not going to sit here and speculate on stuff that i don't know it's i mean it is kind of illegal gambling i mean there's been talks there's been hints of stuff going on with it like to regulate it or whatever. These damn young whippersnappers. Run outside, Steven. Tell them to get off your lawn. For sure. You're not not everyone's gonna win in a repack. For sure. I have no idea, AP. I really don't. I'm not even so much concerned about the uh, surcharge fee, Crazy Kev. I'm concerned about availability. I don't know that there's enough drivers. Oh, I'm not saying I'm running out and taking the offer, but I know that that guy buys a ton of stuff in that group as well. Have I graded with ComC? Yes. Yes, I have. Uh, no. It, well, uh, I don't believe so. I think it's just the same fee that you would pay no matter what. I don't think there's any additional fees for that. It's just the same fee that you would pay for listing a slab card. Please hold. I, that reminded me. He said ComC. And I just got to check my eBay real quick. Okay. Nothing. Everything that I'm interested in ends in about an hour. Yeah, I saw that sold for half a half a mil. What is going on in this Lakers game? It looks like Denver pulled away. I just kind of glanced down. What are you all buying? What are you boys and girls chasing? Did anyone FOMO in the Bowman? I got two jumbos coming. I'll probably rip one 
in a pre-record or maybe rip one live. Ant Edwards will have a better career than Wemby. Wemby looks pretty damn good. I know you're a big flawless. You love yourself some flawless soccer, Dan. Katie, that doesn't. I, what about Caitlin Clark? Steve Splenda has the biggest crush on Caitlin Clark ever. If you need capital to we'll fund that washing machine, um, talk to me about that. I could, I could, I could take that Manny Ramirez slab off your hands. Splenda, are you coming to Canton tomorrow? Steven, same question. Are you coming to Canton tomorrow? I don't know about the Wemby injury angle. I mean, I'm a little worried about it, but he does some like weird, like stretching stuff that no one's ever done before. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, that's got to be fun going through and looking through all that stuff. Engagement ring for your Catholic pay. Uh, Splenda. Bowman Retail. WWE Impeccable. Ming and Samson. I don't know. We'll see. Waiting for the Chrome. My last shipment took about 10 days total door to door. I'll be there first thing in the morning. Uh, you're not coming up. Get out of here. Uh, are repack buyers bigger now than a year ago? Yes, 100%. Um, I think the Nationals so big, it's hard for them to have that big of an impact on it. I don't know for sure. I mean, did something come out after the game? Because he came back in that game. Or did I just miss something on Twitter because I've been live? Are you... Uh... When are you going to make it to the States for a national, Dan? My favorite recent pickup is I can't stop looking at this Favreau auto. I just love this card. This is definitely my most favorite recent pickup. This bad boy. Uh, going to the Cincy show May 4th weekend? Probably not. I see Ryan's having a trade night on Saturday, May 4th. So I'll probably head down to that. Uh, baby got in the way of the national. That's why you don't have kids. Uh-oh. Clark got someone to buy WNBA prison. Oh, yeah, Denver pulled away on this one. I am ready for the national. I shouldn't say I'm ready for the national. I'm excited for the national. It's so nice that it's in my own backyard this year. So nice. I'm very curious to check out. So chat is what's the, what's the vibes on fanatics fest? Are you, do you not care at all? Do you think it's the stupidest thing ever? Are you, eh, whatever are you man I, I would like to try to go to that but new york city is too expensive or i just i can't do the travel or are you i'm 100 percent fomoing i'm definitely going to be in new york city that weekend at least for a day like where do you fall on the fanatics fest scale we really don't know a lot about it uh other than that they're going to have some athletes there and some exclusive product and a trading pit they are having that the way i understand it and some talks that i've had with people they are having vendors, but I, I think they are cherry picking the vendors. I don't think it's like going to be a wide open thing that any Joe Blow can go sign up to be a vendor at this thing. 
uh, it's going to be curated, I guess, might be the, they're going to form an iron ring around the Javits Center. Yeah, it's a Reuben White party in New York City that the common folk can buy a ticket to. It'll definitely be a content creator palooza. Uh, New York's actually a lot of fun. The wife and I have a really good time in New York City for Comic-Con. You'll be treated like a peasant. So, the word on the street is, this will not be the only one of these this year. The buzz is there'll be at least two more this year in the States. So if you miss this one, there's probably going to be other opportunities. Um, I have a feeling, given the rumored locations of the other two shows that I will not divulge, that they will probably be smaller in scope, especially one of them will be smaller in scope. I have a feeling this New York one will be like a premiere event. And then they're going to have these smaller ones that will be not quite as huge a deal. I feel like this New York one, they're going to want to go all out as a proof of concept. I think this is going to be way less of a card show and way more pomp and circumstance, which is fine. I wouldn't be surprised if they drop multiple things. I need to buy my tickets still. I probably will buy one. I probably will buy a VIP pass, even though I probably won't go to the show on Sunday. I don't know yet. Uh, no, the other two cities are smaller. The New York city one will definitely be the prime event. Uh, Ruben said they want to take it international, but I, I don't think that's in the short term plans, Dan. I wouldn't be surprised if they did something in Europe for soccer be quite honest you might be waiting till next year the, the the rumored places that i have heard are more east than they are west by quite a bit i initially was going to pick a pass on it and then i knew what's going to i know what's going to happen because i know myself I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to go to Fan Fest, Fanatics Fest, whatever you want to call this thing. And then it's going to roll around in the week of, and I'm going to be pissed at myself for not booking it. And I'm going to try to put it together last minute and be pissed at myself when I can't pull it off or VIP tickets are sold out or hotels are, well, New York City never runs out of hotels, but you get my point. I'd be running around trying to rearrange work schedules to try to get there at the last minute because FOMO would kick in an overdrive. And then I would either go or not go. And then the weekend would come and then I'd be pissed at myself for not going, especially when all the content start rolling in. I'm like, oh man, I could have been there, blah, blah, blah. So I just cut that off at the pass and said, I'm just booking the room. Screw it. I'm going. I also get to cheat as a content creator because it'll be a tax write off and you can write off a lot of stuff on a trip to New York city. Uh, that, that adds up very quickly. Uh, for travel expenses going to New York City for a weekend. Just a hotel room alone will be a very nice travel expense right off. Um, No, I think Tops, I don't think they'll do Tops Chrome there. Well, I hope they don't do Tops Chrome there. I would much prefer Tops Chrome drop at the National. I do not want Tops Chrome to drop at Fanatics Fest. Uh, I have a feeling May Gem right data will be more of the same. I don't think we see much uh, change there. They've never done a dynasty soccer, correct, Dan?
I love dynasty baseball. I cannot wait for dynasty basketball and football. Lakers got it within eight. They're kind of flirting a little bit here. Yeah, I don't know if those big names are going to do autographs and stuff. I can't imagine what a Tom Brady autograph would cost for stuff. Are you going to go hardcore for that on singles? I assume you're obviously not going to buy $1,000 boxes of a single card, but... Just looking to see what the hot room is on whatnot at the moment. I don't, this is like not even English to me, some of this stuff. Like, who reads this and says, let me buy into this? Is this an OnlyFans or is this whatnot? 20 box break, double bang case hit guaranteed, two full cases of bangs. We got gold bangs, we got flashes, we got bombshells. Like, what are we doing? Spend your money how you want, I guess. Who the hell am I here to sit here to tell you different? AD and LeBron aren't the problem on the Lakers team. It's the rest of the team. Yeah, you could pick up. I buy like dynasty singles for dirt cheap. Like you can get Hall of Fame baseball players for like next to nothing. Like I, what, I got one on my desk right now. I think I got this Clemens for like 250 bucks or something. I mean, a Roger Clemens, Boston Red Sox game used on card auto for like 200 bucks all day. I'm sure that'll probably take a while to calm down because the supply's less. Yeah, I, I agree. You got to let it settle down. <laughs> Perk. Uh... Uh, I agree. Barnes made a good move with that, with the new venue. I, I really like it. I don't disagree, David. I am I am right there with you. I am right there with you. What do we got tomorrow for games? What's the slate tomorrow? Like, what's the order? Let me pull this up on the other screen. I gave predictions for all this on the weekly sports card market update tomorrow. Cavs don't play till Monday. Heat Celtics. Celtics will run them out of the building. Mavs Clippers, no Kawhi Leonard. I'm taking the Mavs all day long. Pacers Bucks, I'll join the rest of the world on the hype train of the Pacers. I think the Pacers beat the Bucks in that series. And then Thunder Pelicans. Um, with all the injuries and stuff, the most intriguing game is Pacers Bucks tomorrow, 7 p.m. <laughs> Interesting. LeBron's already ahead of Kobe, in my opinion. I don't think it's that close. Yeah, Kobe is not top three all time. LeBron and Jordan are so far ahead of everyone else, it's not even funny. Yeah, Kobe's not even. Yeah, that's a that's an interesting take, Hobby Champs. I don't know that Kobe's even on the Mount Rushmore. You said cement LeBron ahead of Kobe and a top three spot at the GOAT table. You're implying that he's top three. I mean, I'm reading your comment. If Lakers miraculously win it all this year, 
does it cement LeBron ahead of Kobe and a top three spot on the GOAT table? Yeah, Kobe's not. I wouldn't even put Kobe in the top five. A ton, Star. Listen, Kobe ama- was an amazing player. He was great, but he's... I mean, he, he's one of the best all time, but he is not... I don't consider him GOAT status. Kobe had a killer mentality on the court, but he was a really, really good NBA player. And he's very collectible. I, I understand why he's super popular, but... I mean, it's LeBron and Jordan and literally everybody else. It's not even close. And we all know I'm a Cleveland guy, so I'm going to put LeBron ahead of Jordan. It's just the way that it is. LeBron's already light years ahead of Kobe, and it's not even close. LeBron was ahead of Kobe before he even won his title in Cleveland. And LeBron's been top two for years. So I don't know where you're getting him like like he would just be getting into the top three. That's an absolutely insane baseball sat, Son Stadler. Oh, God, I haven't thought about Top Shot in forever. I mean, there's a proper order there. It's LeBron, Jordan, Kareem, but. I'm definitely putting Jordan and LeBron in front of Kareem. No offense to Kareem. I also don't really remember Kareem playing. Uh, I would agree with this. I would take Duncan over Kobe. At least intriguing, man. He's having a hell of a start to the season. I do not waste my time watching UFO. That's, I just picked up that hands-on hips last night for right at comps. He's having a good year, too. Uh, Nuggets pulled back up to 10, I see. Is, Splenda, this question specifically for you. Is Caitlin Clark better than Kobe Bryant? We'll play when they only had a film at 11. <laughs> That's a funny comment. I haven't seen much movement in soda prices, no. What? What What planet are you on, Hobby Champs? There's 209 people in chat right now. There's 209 people currently watching this stream. LeBron, correct me if I'm wrong. I'll let the chat determine this. LeBron has been in the top two for a hot minute. This is not like breaking news. It's been LeBron and Jordan for quite a while now. Like it, I, I listen. I'm from Cleveland. I got to put LeBron one, but it's it's Jordan and LeBron in whatever order you want to put those two in, and then it's like that. I mean, it's not even a question, and it's been that way for a while. I haven't checked it on LA prices in a hot minute.
I'd put Oscar or Kareem three. It's hard because I never saw those guys play, and it was a completely different sport back then. Uh, I'm showing 210 in chat. But I could be wrong. Or StreamYard could be lying to me. I don't know. I don't know how accurate this thing is. Oh, there's se there's there's 140 on YouTube and there's 70 on Twitter. That's why. I'm getting the combined total. I'm streaming to both platforms. 2016 champ cemented him into... Yeah, I would agree with that. Shut up, Perk. The fact that you even had to say that. The guy went to so many straight NBA finals, it's ridiculous. The fact that he even made it to that many NBA finals proves the point. And some of those Cavs teams that he drugged to the NBA Finals, the first one that he went to with the Cavs, that team with Eric Snow as point guard, that team was trash. They had no business being there. And he put the entire team on his back to knock the Pistons off in the Eastern Conference Finals. And his last championship run with Cleveland, that team was garbage too when they traded Kyrie. I mean, Oscar's pretty damn good. Yeah, I would imagine this is how this goes down. I mean, Le I mean, watch tonight's game. Like, they're losing. Don't get me wrong. But LeBron is 39 years old with a trillion miles on him. And he is still playing out of his mind. If by dad getting killed, you mean getting banned for gambling? Jordan had to take a couple of years off from basketball because he bought into too many repacks. He'll be fine. He gets up all the time. See, he's already fine. Uh, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, Curry's like, I mean, Curry's the best shooter ever. He's not necessarily the best point guard ever. It's two different skill sets. Uh, that'll never happen. The NBA will never let that happen, if it, even if it is true. Nuggets in five, probably Nuggets in four. Didn't LeBron play in every game last year? Or no, that was the uh, that last year with the Cavs. I think the last championship, last title run with the Cavs, he played in every game. He's actually played quite a bit other than being hurt. Look at his minute totals. They're insane. Kayla Clark. Shut up, Splenda. Uh, because Katie's on the backside of his career. Bradley Beal's mediocre at best. Booker's good, but they don't have a point guard. That's part of the problem. I get LeBron's a hot button issue uh, among people. 
All right, we've got an hour and a half. Lakers Nuggets have just wrapped up. It is 11 p.m. I think George Gervin over Booker. Booker was asked today. I had Booker in best ball in an underdog one-day league, and he was god-awful. Yeah, LeBron's insane. Sure, smash. I never ask for likes, comments, and subscribes anymore. I haven't for a year plus. Years, actually. So if you want to smash the like button on the way out the door, feel free. LeBron's been around forever, man. I have no idea how many likes are on this video. I really don't. I could probably see that somewhere, but I don't care enough. Oh, uh, no, it's not showing. I don't know what it's at. That's all I got for you, boys and girls. We're going to wrap it up there. Call it a night. I'm going to go play a little bit of video games before bed. I don't know what I'm going to play. I don't know if I'm going to play a little Civ, maybe. You want to play Civ? Maybe. I think I'm going to play a game of Dota 2, maybe. Maybe some Marble Snap. I don't know. We'll see in a little something something get caught up on youtube content that i'm probably behind on we will wrap that up there so tomorrow weekly sports card market update assuming no crazy news monday we're gonna revisit my damaged bobby witt card tuesday a little deeper dive on the whatnot repack discussion that we had earlier today wednesday a part two video to that discussing is this all just a house of cards uh, if news or craziness pops up, those will get shifted around a little bit, but two of those videos, no, one of those videos is recorded. Well, actually two of those videos, the weekly and the whatnot discussion video are already recorded. The other two are planned in my noggin. So those will be coming and then we'll see what else we get into NFL draft week should be a fun one. I have a busy week at work this week. So I'm trying to get ahead on content, uh, card collector two trade night coming up in early May ship show coming up. Fanatics Fest, the National. It's going to be a fun summer. Catch you, boys and girls, in the next one. Peace.